Hey y'all, hey y'all. Welcome to my channel. This is Straight Facts Commentary where I give you my unpopular opinions in everything pop culture. So please, please, please stick around and subscribe for more. hey guys i'm back again with another video um this video being a little bit different than my regular style videos kind of casual impromptu um video and we just reached 6k which it might fluctuate a little bit because people be subscribing and unsubscribing randomly but we're practically there pretty much right um so so happy so happy so excited thank you guys so much i love you guys so much um, with that being said, I wanted to do this video because I told you guys, I told a couple of my subscribers who asked about it, um, that I was going to do a full video kind of explaining, um, my autism lore. <laughs> and now I, um, am recently diagnosed, I'm late diagnosed, I've been diagnosed for a year and all of the crazy stuff that kind of happened to lead up to my diagnosis and just also the things that I deal with just to give a broader um, explanation of it for those of you guys who uh, want to know more about it for those of y'all who have autism yourselves because I talked to a couple of you guys um, just yesterday and today on my community tab and I was like oh my gosh there's a lot more of you guys who are autistic who watch me so I really appreciate that gather all the tizzies gather and here this video <laughs> is also for the people who don't know if they are the people who wonder like hmm i do little things like this or i have issues with this or i struggle with that but i'm not 100 percent sure this might help answer some questions for you or give a better understanding to how you are as a person and what you go through and what you deal with so i'm happy to do that um as well it's so crazy because i was gonna do this video anyway because i had a couple of you guys who asked questions about it and wanted me to make a video going more in depth so i was gonna do this video anyway but even more so now now after the crap that happened yesterday like <laughs> there's been a couple of people throughout me having this channel ever since i you know told you guys that i am autistic there has been a couple of people who will and have used that as an insult i don't even go back and forth with them i just block them because there's really no point of going back and forth with ignorant ableist people i don't even waste my time doing that but it's so crazy how i have every once in a while i do get those comments and most of the time it's like if people don't agree with me that's fine we can go back and forth on the comments and like have a conversation but when people use ableism as a way to like insult somebody that's crazy that's like walking up to somebody that's like walking up to somebody in a wheelchair and being like haha you're in a wheelchair like that's crazy that's crazy and i feel like for somebody who just found out that i'm autistic i handle i'm handling it pretty well like i i would think i'd be like oh my god like soul crushed like nah because i got you guys and i know the real ones who mess with me mess with me so anyone who's ableist it's like i just block them I'm going to get into it, but yeah, this is going to be a longer video. So like, this is like a podcast style video, live situation, whatever you want to call it. So there's not going to be anything to watch on the screen really at all. So just throw your headphones in and do what you got to do around the house. I'm curious to know what you guys do when you watch me too. Like, what do you guys do? If you want to like comment down below, like comment. So, like, what do you guys be doing when you're watching? Are you in bed? Are you cleaning? Are you cooking? Are you like chill? Like, I'm curious. Are you doing your homework? What are you doing? I want to know anyway um <laughs> but yeah just throw me in your headphones or whatever because i'm gonna be just blabber mouthing so i'm gonna kind of start from the beginning of when things started getting intense for me obviously i've had autism my entire life but things didn't start getting super intense for me physically and sensory wise and just different things that were affecting like my quality of life until like my early adulthood like that's when things really started to like <laughs> rev up in terms of me struggling to function as a person um i didn't really struggle to function as a person when i was young but they do say that the traits of autism intensify as you age so you might not be struggling nearly as much when you're younger and you have it like a a kid a preteen a teenager but then when you get into your adult life that as you age 
things become more difficult, increasingly more difficult. And as your life circumstances change, it gets harder. So I'm going to start from where it was getting hard for me. I basically ended up suffering from a lot of different traits of autism that I didn't even realize were traits. So I'm going to explain some of the traits and the different scenarios in which I was dealing with them. And I didn't even understand that they were autistic traits and why why things were so difficult for me i just knew things were really hard and i was really stressed out i was really depressed and i was really like spiraling but i had no idea that it was due to some of my <laughs> autistic traits so one of the major major ones that plagued my entire work history i've had like four or five jobs within the last four or five years and this plagued my entire work history and what caused me one of the biggest things that caused me to move from job to job constantly because of chronic exhaustion i found out as an autistic person that i have chronic exhaustion what that means is i'm literally tired 24 7. i sleep all the time i have to take naps constantly my body is physically tired i feel like i've ran a marathon every day because my my physical body feels like weak and tired so it's not just like oh i feel sleepy like you know how like your mind starts feeling fuzzy and you're tired no it's like my whole body feels like this heavy weighty tiredness and i always have to sleep so this affected my jobs obviously because if you're constantly tired all the time whether it's mentally or physically then how are you going to work <laughs> so that's what happened to me i've had several jobs because um, I would constantly like start jobs, work them for about six months. My chronic exhaustion would catch up to me and I'd end up quitting. Also, lack of dopamine. Because once I learn a job and once I've learned it, it's like my brain shuts off and it's like, okay, you've mastered this job. Now I'm done. And that's what would happen too. So chronic exhaustion plagued me on top of like once my brain decided that it has mastered whatever subject that it was trying to learn from the job my brain like completely lost interest and i wanted to quit the job and it would be the most frustrating thing i used to think that feeling absolutely exhausted and having no energy to do anything except for laying in bed was like completely normal i thought everyone out here was in the same struggle as me just like having literally zero energy just wanting to sleep and do nothing all the time and no matter what you did no matter how much rest you got that energy was never coming back i thought like we were all out here experiencing this it was really funny to me when um the professional who diagnosed me with autism was also like girl you have chronic fatigue and i was like what like you're telling me that this exhaustion i've been feeling since 10 years old and have not been able to gain any any energy back since is like not normal like you're telling me not everyone is feeling this way i definitely think the fatigue that i'm feeling now is tied into burnout but i was experiencing chronic fatigue literally like since elementary school which is crazy because i just thought that was normal no one ever really talked to me about it no one ever questioned me about why i was so tired all the time but i'm yes like autistic people can experience chronic fatigue and be affected by it at a higher rate but i just thought this was like normal life everyone was living and the thing that's so crazy about that is if you go to the doctor for it and you tell the doctor i'm so tired all the time i have no idea why and you don't know you're autistic and they don't know you're autistic then you're gonna get misdiagnosed for something that you really don't have when really your exhaustion is a trait of your autism another thing as i got older that i was starting to realize is that I was struggling a lot socially. I didn't struggle socially that much as an early teen and like um, it, in my early childhood. But as I got older and I was in more and more social situations, I was becoming more and more recluse. And I just thought I was an introvert, which I am. But it turns out that I was, I just had an inability to socialize with people i was almost like unlearning how to do it like i would have the urge to want to go up to a group of people or go up to a person when i was out somewhere and i literally could feel my body like sinking into itself like no you can't do it it was like i was stuck in my seat or i was stuck on the wall like i literally everything in my mind was saying hey like go talk to that person but i physically couldn't do it um, then when I would get into groups of people and talk to them, I found it really hard to understand and relate and talk to them 
and have like a fluid conversation with people. It was so hard and talking to people and being in groups and being in settings where there was people was so draining and I had no idea why and I just want to escape all of the time. And that was happening to me more and more. Being in large groups of people socially where like there's a group of like five or six or seven people in a circle and they're all talking was like hell to me. I did not know how to communicate that way. I felt like it was overstimulating. There was too much going on. There was too many people talking. There was too many people like asking questions. There was too many people like, like I didn't know how to process. Like my brain was like, Err! like that white noise. Like I couldn't process it like I am always it's always easier for me to talk to someone one-on-one -on -one. so for autistic people it's not about not wanting to socialize because we do a lot of us want to we want to talk to people we want to have friends we want to get to know people but it's like in large group social settings it's like we literally can't it's like our brains do, do not allow us. it's like it's too overstimulating for almost for us to process like talking in large groups and large social settings, at least for me. So when I started to realize that socializing was becoming more and more hard for me, I thought it was a little bit strange, but that still wasn't where I got my diagnosis. That was just something that I noticed was becoming harder and harder for me. And I started to become more and more recluse and I just stayed to my man and like the closest, my closest friends, like my day one people from like when I was young. And at a certain point, I completely stopped trying to um, put in the effort to get to know people in person because it was too overwhelming for me to try to meet people in person during parties or social gatherings and stuff like that a lot of the friends that i've made over the last i don't know four to five years has been online because it's way less overstimulating for me i can talk to them on my own terms and like i can talk to them through text which is more comfortable for me and then i ended up meeting people that i met online in real life and they're some of my best friends find it so overstimulating at times that we completely shut down like i've had complete like shutdowns where i cannot speak i cannot move that's how crippling um it can be for me socially so it's not like oh just something we're choosing to be like antisocial and like no it's a literally physical body response that we can have of which if it's too overstimulating for us, we can completely shut down physically. So it's not like a just like a cute little, oh, I don't want to talk to you. No, it's a, it's a feeling. It's a crippling body response that we have to being overstimulated socially. Okay, so what have we gone over already for me? Chronic exhaustion, um, the social aspect that was becoming really hard, um, and then stimming. Stimming is a really big one. Um, I didn't realize that I had been stimming like like intensely in private this entire time and that it was something that I did um, at my house while I was comfortable around my man but I it was almost like a default that I would turn it off when I was in public when I went outside which is called masking by the way which I'm gonna get into that um, for those of y'all who don't know and explain it a little bit further um, but stimming is any repetitive motion that's used to self-regulate which anyone can do but it's connected to autistic people a lot more because we do it a lot more than the average person so like for an example stimming can be twirling your hair um chewing on the end of a pencil um shaking your leg you know how like you're sitting and you do that thing where you're like shaking your leg that one leg you're just like bouncing your knee stimming um uh twirling in a chair like in one of those spinny chairs um biting your nails um anything can really be a stem but what makes it inherently autistic for some autistic people is the types of stems that we do and the frequency in which we do them so autistic people just stem a lot more and we have different stems than uh the average person anyone can stem by the way so if you stem if you stem in general that doesn't necessarily make you autistic it is the um, the frequency in which you're stemming and the types of stems that you do that might lean more towards that so basically <laughs> i didn't realize for a long time that in pub or in private that i was stemming a lot like at my house specifically um when i was comfortable around my man 
and I let out my autistic stems around him unknowingly because I love him and I was comfortable with him so I did a lot of like weird thing quote unquote which i didn't think anything of them i just thought i was being like silly and crazy and goofy and whatever because i am a silly crazy goofy person so i just thought it was a part of my personality but it turns out a lot of these things that i was doing were things that my body naturally was having me do because it's just a part of my processing as an autistic person so a lot of the things i was doing in private like when i was home with my man like after i would get off you know home from work or if i had energy that day um are were things like um screaming and shouting <laughs> when i say screaming and shouting i don't mean like bloody murder i just like randomly i would just like yell or scream or like just do something silly and like run around so i would do that um uh, pacing like i would just naturally pace back and forth as i was talking um running <laughs> sometimes i would run to one end of the house and run back just because i had energy and i thought i was being silly so i'd always just laugh when i did it um rocking so i'd like sit in my chair and like be rocking as i was talking to him but it wasn't out of any nervousness it was just literally because my body naturally has the urge to rock so i will just do it um swaying um rubbing my like legs and knees while i'm sitting but like repeatedly rubbing them um jumping <laughs> dancing like randomly out of the blue just dancing and laughing and being silly and happy like i would just have energy and start dancing or jumping no music playing just dancing just free just free fall just free form dancing um heavily blinking um moving my head back and forth um picking my like hair and nails um playing with my hair um you know like i said bouncing my knee or shaking my legs while sitting um you know echolalia which is a form of like repeating words and phrases sometimes i make up words <laughs> and phrases and repeat it and um me and my man would like play this game because i'll like make up words and phrases due to my echolalia and he'll just like repeat them <laughs> so i was doing a lot of these weird things and i just thought it was just me being silly while i was home because i was home and i was just being silly but it turns out that um i needed to do all of these things for my processing it's just something that i do it's a part of my autism it's part of my traits it's how i get out energy it's how i self-regulate that's just what i do and I found out that when I was leaving the house, I turned off a lot of these things. I wouldn't do them in public because it's not socially acceptable to stim in those ways in public. You see what I mean? start on masking part one hi i'm tash i'm a neurodiverse therapist and this is part one of a guide to unmasking for autistic people so stimming generally if you're autistic you should be doing it so usually stimming comes in the form of sensory seeking behavior such as rocking back and forth rubbing your face on things making noise or spinning in circles those are some common ones it can also be things like bouncing your leg uh, biting your fingernails, biting the inside of your cheek, um, picking at your hair. Those are the more subtle ones. Stimming is fantastic for emotion regulation. And generally, as, a, as part of the unmasking process, you want to be leaning into those behaviors. It's a rediscovery of what feels good for you and your brain. Stimming behaviors often get masked in early childhood because they're considered behaviors that are socially unacceptable. Suppressing stimming behaviors can create a constant air of anxiety around you in day-to-day -day life that seems to be occurring for no apparent reason. Also very important behaviors for self-soothing during autistic overload or shutdown or what has traditionally been called meltdowns. Try and identify any non-harmful stimming behaviors you already have and maybe try and consciously do them more. Or you can go on a bit of discovery journey of what feels good for your brain. Try some new stims.
So those were just a few videos that I explained stimming a little bit more. I've developed a lot of new stims that were basically locked in my body <laughs> before I knew that I was autistic and now that I've un uh, you know started my unmasking process which is basically allowing myself to be authentically me um I've developed more which I'll get into that um in a second I just wanted to give some information about the major things in my life that I w I was doing that I had no idea that was connected to my autism the most major things that were affecting me um, before I found out were definitely my chronic exhaustion, my social issues, and my stimming. So I'm going to explain the specific like events that led up to me being like, okay, something is really wrong. Like I've been struggling this entire time with these different things, um, but these major events made me look into like okay something is really wrong because this major thing happened so um one of the first things that kind of started me trying to question like what is going on with me is um i have like religious meetings that i would go to that i'm sitting down and i have to like sit still and focus on the speaker and as time would go on it would become very very difficult for me to sit still and focus like i could not focus as the person was talking and i couldn't sit still not just like stimming but i have to like literally get up continually throughout this entire process back and forth from sitting down and getting up and walking around like in the back sitting down coming back getting up and walking around i could not sit still and it was getting to the point where it was starting to irritate me how much i needed to physically move and i was like what is wrong with me why can't i sit still why can't i just sit here and focus why do i have this like urge to move my body around so much why do i have to keep getting up why can't I focus on the speaker? Why do I have to be like looking at my phone or fidgeting with my hands or fidgeting with my body? Like it was becoming very frustrating and it was becoming hard for me to, you know, go to my, you know, religious events. So there was that. So I was doing research on it and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So it was very frustrating. I would always vent, you know, to my friends and family about this issue. And they're like, oh, maybe you just have anxiety X, Y, Z. But so I kept that in the back of my head as something is wrong. Something is going on with me on top of all that other stuff that I mentioned earlier in this video. Um, something is going on with me, but I have no idea what it is. Right. So I keep that in the back of my head. And then some more time goes by, probably like mm, a year from that point goes by. I end up going out with um, a friend of mine. She invites me to this like karaoke room bar thing. And I was really excited because I love music. I, you know, you guys obviously know that I love music. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, she was like, okay, XYZ is going to be there. I did not know the people. I did not know the, the friends that she was inviting. I only knew her and like one other person, but I was like, okay, should be fine. You know, I was a little bit nervous but about it, but I was like, okay, whatever should be cool. We go to the karaoke event. I'm automatically uncomfortable. Cause you guys know if you go, if you've ever been to a karaoke house, you go into like this karaoke room and there's like these like lights in there these like neon light kind of disco lights and then they have the karaoke set up and it's just like a small cubicle room right it gets packed with like a bunch of people like i don't even know how many people at this point it's probably at least eight to ten people and i only know two people in the room so i started feeling like really really like uncomfortable but i was like okay i'm just having social anxiety fine whatever let me just ignore it we're out let's have a good time but i was finding it very hard to have a good time because i was overwhelmed by the social aspect and like i was telling you guys um we're very sensitive socially and we can become overstimulated very easily in certain social settings but you know me not knowing that i was autistic at the time i was just trying to ignore it push through worst thing you could possibly do i'll hold round back to that um but so we're all talking where everybody's singing everybody's you know we're having drinks we're having fun and i was finding it so hard to have a good time i was trying so hard to have a good time but i just felt in like my chest like this anxiety this like heavy weighty dark feeling and i was like oh my god and i was finding it hard to speak and talk and i was just observing everyone and i was like having a shutdown like i was shutting down in that moment but i was trying to push past it so the night goes on i get up i sing i'm trying to ignore how i feel on the inside as the night goes on um i'm with these people for hours we're singing we're dancing we're eating everything i'm trying to push down like this 
overwhelming feeling that I have in my chest and my gut. Um, then they were like, Hey, let's go to a Korean, um, barbecue place. So we ended up getting in different cars and driving to this Korean barbecue place. I am so like, I'm drinking like a lot because I feel so anxious that I'm trying to do anything to like make myself feel comfortable socially because I don't feel comfortable. I'm overwhelmed and I'd rather just be with my two friends. And I was finding it hard to communicate with people. So I actually stopped really talking to everyone. I, I was becoming really, really like recluse. And I felt really, really like weird on the inside. Like I felt like this unsettling energy inside of me, but I wasn't sure what it was. Um, we get to this K barbecue place. We're sitting down eating. I have a zero appetite. Like I'm not hungry. I'm like, oh my God, I just want to go home. But I don't want to be the party pooper because I got drove there. I did not drive myself there. She would have to drive me home and everybody was getting ready to eat. So I was like, let me just whatever. So I started feeling really, really, really weird. And I guess it got to the point of my sensory overload that it was just like max peak or whatever. So then I ended up going to the bathroom because I just felt so weird and out of my body. Right. So then I sat down in the bathroom like stall, but not on the toilet. Like I sat down on the floor, like up against the wall. And I was just like mentally freaking out. I was like, oh my God, I feel so overwhelmed. I don't know why. All of a sudden, everything around me started spinning. Um, ever and you're probably thinking I'm drunk. No, 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 <laughs> I wasn't drunk. It was like a completely different feeling that I've ever felt in my entire life. It was an out of body experience. Like I didn't feel like I was in my own body anymore. I was like, what is going on? Like I started to I felt like I was outside of my own body, like I was high or something. Something was like really wrong. And I was like, I had no idea. I'd never felt that before in my entire life. Um, and I was trying to text on my phone because I brought my phone and I was so out of it that I couldn't even text and be like, hey, somebody come in the bathroom and help me because I was literally like everything was slowing down around me. Like everything was moving in slow motion. I felt like I was disattached from my body. I was looking around the room and it felt like I was looking through like goggles. And, and you're probably thinking, girl, you were drunk. No, <laughs> no, actually, let me put this video. It kind of explains it. <laughs> so yeah that is a visual representation of pretty much how i was feeling like an out of body experience like something supernatural or something almost i've been drunk before that wasn't that so i was like what is happening so i just sat there like that and i was praying i was praying to god to help me because i had no idea what was going on um and so apparently if you let yourself be in uh that type of uh, sensory overload like that and you let it go on for long it basically gets worse and worse and worse when you're in that state and you you know you don't know how to get out of it and at the time I didn't know how to get out of it so I ended up having a full-on meltdown so I was in sensory overload at that point and your sensory overload if goes unchecked as an autistic person can go from a sensory overload to a full-on meltdown breakdown freak out and that's what happened <laughs> so I end up having a freak out in a public rest, a uh, public restroom in a restaurant, in a Korean barbecue. Most humiliating thing that's ever happened to me and the scariest thing that's ever happened to me in my life because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was wrong. So you're probably thinking, well, how did you melt down? Like what happened? So um, I ended up like feeling this fuzzy dizziness in my head to where I couldn't even process where I was anymore in space and time. Like I was literally gone. Um, and I ended up like screaming, like, screaming <laughs> like bloody murder apparently which i barely remember this like um i don't remember it and my friends had to come and get me out of the bathroom um and i ended up coming down from my overload and my meltdown like in the car on the way home um they end up having to take me home and that was before i found out so nobody knew what was wrong nobody knew why I did that everybody was like freaked out and scared because they had no idea what happened to me I didn't know what happened to me I couldn't even explain it at the time so I was super embarrassed I was super confused I was super sad I felt really bad because a lot of those people some of the people who were there that day I had met me for the first time that day right humiliating um so then flash forward from there like six months from that event happening to me 
my friend, one of my close friends, um, I reposted a meme or something on Facebook that had to do with autism. And I was like, you know, sometimes I think I am because I don't know what the heck is wrong with me. Right. So she was like, you know what? You know, you might be. You never know. And she sent me this link. And so the link was a link to a questionnaire, um, an autism traits questionnaire. And there were several on the website. And I ended up taking several of those little quizzes, like autism quizzes, and I wore plas- I passed them with flying colors. Would you believe? <laughs> um, I I had a lot of the different symptoms. I scored very high for autistic traits for a lot of the tests, and I was like, oh, "What? No, what? What's going on?" I was very surprised, and then I ended up from there doing my own research and coming to the conclusion that I was. Um, I ended up getting diagnosed, you know, getting properly accessed and diagnosed, uh, probably like, I don't know, two to three to four months from that point. And yeah, she thought that, uh, she was like, you know, you could be due to this, this, and this, right? Turns out my friend who sent me the link, her kids, she has two kids, her two kids are autistic and she's she herself feels like she is she's not diagnosed but her two kids end up getting diagnosed and she was saying that she probably um is too and that they probably got it from her so yeah but i had to have an autistic meltdown without knowing that i was autistic in public um for me to finally figure out that i was on top of everything else that i was dealing with prior to that in regards to work and stuff like that so yeah uh, that specific event led to my diagnosis on top of looking back at those other things so now that i've started my unmasking journey um over the last year which has been you know me just allowing myself to naturally respond how i want you know how my body wants and also not putting myself in situations that cause me to be overstimulated um, without the proper accommodations, a lot of things have changed for me. Um, I've developed new stems, which are just different body movements <laughs> that a lot of autistic people have. Um, so teeth chattering, um, arm flapping, self body hugging, like self soothing. If I'm in an uncomfortable situation, um, putting my arms behind my back. Sometimes I clap my hands when I'm excited. Um, making random noises or sounds, like I said, echolalia, and also this can also happen if I'm in a situation where I'm overstimulated um, or something is sensorially not appropriate for me, I might make random noises or sounds, um, not words, actual sounds. Um, cracking my body, hands, and wrists, I do that as a form of a stim. But um, I don't, you know, stem in public like often. I go about my day like I normally would, like any other person. Usually stemming is a reaction to something, at least for me. So if I'm super excited, if I'm super happy, if I'm super like, I'll stem, I'll move around, I'll do like certain movements. Or if I'm deeply uncomfortable or overstimulated, then I can also react by stemming too, which is basically my body responding like no get me out of the situation so i might stem in those cases too so stimming can be positive and negative it just depends on what's happening um with us i don't have regular meltdowns or anything like that um meltdowns only happen if i'm in situations for a long period of time that go unchecked or if i don't get out of them it can cause a meltdown but because i know i'm autistic now i don't allow myself and my body to get to those points to the point where i am completely at the mercy of my body and i'm just freaking out no um i get out of the situation before it gets to that point <laughs> but before at that point i had no idea so i was just going through the motions but I don't put myself in places that can cause me to be overstimulated or cause meltdowns. That's why um, I finally quit my job and after I got my diagnosis and I was like, I'm going to be a sitter full time because this is where I um, fit the best. A lot of my traits make it hard for me to work regular nine to fives, stimming, my chronic exhaustion. Um, social issues when it comes to work and how I communicate and how blunt I am and how forward I am and how analytical I am, um, 
that can get in the way when it comes to work and I can be perceived as rude or mean and people perceive me like that on YouTube all the time. You're so negative. I'm just analytical. I'm critical. That's just how my brain works. Um, and so that can come across in a work setting. And, you know, as you can imagine, some people might not like me because of that very reason. So, um, so a lot of aspects due to my physicality and also how I communicate and how I talk, um, makes it very hard for me to work regular jobs. So I was like, I'm good. I'm just going to go full force and be a pet sitter full time. I don't interact with people at all. I interact with animals only. <laughs> And it's the best thing that I could ever have as a, a full-time career on top of um, other endeavors I'm trying to get into. I'm trying to, you know, passive income in other ways and also YouTube where I get to talk to you guys, but through the screen. <laughs> can imagine talking to all of you in real life in person. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I indulge in a lot of my special interests, which is YouTube, pop culture, female rap, also traveling i love traveling i love vacationing i love food um and with working and doing the things that i love to do as my job instead of my regular job i hope in you know years to come that i'm able to travel the way i really want to and do the things that i really 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 want to do <laughs> and it's starting now it's starting now i feel like i'm really starting now my whole life is really starting over now I feel like I've started my whole life over because I didn't know all the way up until now that I've had autism and I wasn't truly living as myself and so much trauma that came with that and how I was raised and that's a whole nother story uh like my come up my life um that's a whole nother story but I'm just glad at this point I know and I can live how I was intended to live and that I can be myself and that I have an outlet to do that um, with the friends I have, the family that I have, um, the supportive man that I have, and um, you guys too now being in uh, another part of the outlet because I don't mind sharing this with you. It's not something that bothers me. Uh, there's a lot of things about it that I, that I love and a lot of things about my brain that I like. So you know, it is what it is. I just have really bad sensory issues and social issues. Um, but it's okay. <laughs> a lot of my friends do too. So we all get our lives together, whatever. Um, but, um, that's it really for this one. You guys let me know, um, down below what other special videos that you guys would want me to do. Um, unpopular opinions, story times, um, you know, uh, music related videos that might be different than the ones that I uh, typically make you know anything like that um leave me down if you're tizzy gang please comment down below I need to know how many of y'all are here let's connect let's talk let's chat let's gab but that was overall it for this long video if you like longer videos like this let me know below how often you guys want me to do them for like different topics and I, I'm sure I can incorporate that but um I love you guys and that's really it for this one I'll talk to you in the next one bye